Let's let them know who really got it. Came up from the bottom, now we riding in a mozzie. And these my jealous done burnt the hole in my pocket. See me, I'm shining. Yo, what's going on guys? It is your boy Bugs, and today guys, it's time to show y'all the meta perks. What perks you should be running in this game. I already showed y'all the tier list, what are the top players and who y'all should be playing. Now it's time to show y'all the perks y'all should be using, and the perks that y'all should stop using. Now, this one's going to be a little bit different. Uh, we're going to go with three tiers. We're going to call it the useful perk, the mid perk, and the useless perk. And let's get straight into it, guys. Cut, 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 cut. Alright, so I already know some of y'all attention span is very short. Or y'all already know what all these perks do and don't, you know, want to go through this whole explanation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell y'all a cheat code. At the end of this video, go to the 20 minute mark of this video. Go to that and you're going to see all the best character perk combination. Yes, you're welcome. Now, if you don't understand the perks or you feel like there's a lot of perks that you don't know of, then continue watching the video. I appreciate y'all. I'm going to start with our offensive perks. Offensive perks. Shirt, cannon, sniper, useless. Double stacked, probably mid, and I'm saying barely probably because these percentage for damages are very, very low, guys. These 7 to 15 percent are literally only ab adding maximum 1 to 3 damages um, to your attacks depending on what projectile you even use because it is only projectiles. So, you probably think it's good for like Rain Dog and like Tom and Bugs, but in reality, you're just not really getting that much out of it. So, I put this in the useless perk, double stacked, maybe mid. Next, we have his dead shot. Uh, um, your team deals 5% increased damage with projectiles. 10% is doubled. Useless. Guys, again, this one is just for long range. This one is just overall. Again, just don't feel like it's useful at all. I'm reversing all the other perks. So we're going to put this in the category of useless. Next, we have is lumpy space punch. You deal more a 5% increased damage in the air. If you double with your teammate, then it's 10%. I'm going to put this in the category of useless, guys. This perk just doesn't do enough. Again, you're adding an extra damage or two. And I guess your knockback is being increased because you're doing more damage. But even then, it's just not worth the increase, guys. There's so many better perks than using this. So lumpy space, useless. Collateral damage. Uh, you deal one extra damage when the enemy is knocked back to a wall or a floor. Two, if your partner also runs it. I'm going to have to put this in the mid, and the only reason why this is mid is because it's literally only for one character, um, Steven. Um, it's good for other characters too, but again, there's better perks, so I wouldn't recommend it on them. But for the fact that you have Steven that does, you know, his own walls and stuff, and map dependent too, you know, like, um, I would say like, Scooby Mansion, um, Colossal, I forget, the, the Rick and Morty map, I already forgot, Cromleons or something like that? Yeah, so, i do a map like that, so I'll have to put this in the mid category. That's not all, folks. This is a sleeper, and I'll definitely put this as a useful perk. Now, um, definitely recommend running two ones, both useful. And what this does is it allows you to do crazy offstage stuff and not be punished for it. So if you are 100% sure you can get a kill, make sure you KO your um, opponent. What it does is it blasts you straight back onto the map pretty much. Like it just blows you back. Even if an enemy is coming to hit you to punish you right after, it neglects that and pushes you right back on the stage. So this is a very sleeper perk and it's very useful. Next we have painted target. You do an increase five extra damage when hit stunning that are um hitting enemies that are hit stunned. Again, like this um the spacey the lumpy space thing, useless. Just not enough damage versus all these other perks that have so much more benefits from it. Snowball effect, you deal increased damage against a fighter with the highest damage. 50% of his doubled. Useless. Don't run these perks, guys. These perks are just not it. Make it rain, dog. 20% increased projectile speed. I highly re recommend using this if you use a lot of projectiles um, on your character. An increased speed of 20% is ridiculous. Running it doubled, I wouldn't recommend it just because it's only an extra 5%, but that's on you. But very useful perk. Doubled, don't think it's needed. Wildcat, useless. Don't even want to talk about this. I already talked about this extra damage stuff. They're just not useful. Next we have a second wind beneath your wings. Refresh all your options um specials after the ring out. I would say this is mid. But if it's ran with double as in you and your teammate, refresh all your air options. Then then this is literally god tier. This is useful. <laughs> Um, the reason why is because not only that it allows you to, you know, kill people off stage, it allows you to get your jumps back, your dodges back, and your specials back. So you, if you do have someone trying to punish you, and you have enough time to react, then you're able to punish them because you have all your options again back in the air. And it could be a cycle of them trying to get you and wondering how are you doing this and not realizing that you're getting all your options back um, with this perk. 
So by itself, I'll say it's mid because you're getting your special back is pretty good. Um, but having all your options, which is doubled, is very um, useful. Highly recommend it, um, running it if you're running it doubled. Already talk about it. Useless. Useless. Don't even, don't even look at them. Ice perk. Now this one's very mid now because they definitely nerfed it. I'm very dependent on what you do because it only allows pretty much like a one stack, but you feel it um, at one, you know, one stack. Very, very dependent. I think this is really useful on just like Superman and Rain Dog and stuff because of the projectiles and how many projectiles they have. Um, but that's about it. So I'll probably put this in the mid perk, like I said. Fire. I'll put this in the mid. I know a lot of people think this perk is awful. But you really think about it. Two hits and you do an extra, I think, two to three damage almost every time. It's kind of good, you know, on like Harley, um, Rain Dog, all the projectile characters pretty much. Like anything that has a nice projectile starter, getting that hit and getting an extra hit and just doing, you know, two to three extra damage off of two hits, I think is good versus the other ones, which would take a harder hit, like a, a attack that does over like eight to ten damage to see the difference or, you know, multiple, um, multiple hits for it to even become versus this one that allows you to do extra damage over time really quick. So, again, put this in the mid. Um, really wish this perk didn't get too gutted, but yeah, mid perk. Um, next we have aesthetic shock. Useless. It's it's just not worth it. Um, it's very hard to stay on the ground, in my opinion, for four seconds. I mean, this game, especially with everyone dodging and jumping and all this stuff, but when you do get it, it's pretty pretty cool, decent, but it's just not worth it, in my opinion. So I would have to put this as a useless perk. Hopefully, they definitely do buff this perk. I would love to see this perk being used more, um, especially on certain characters. Next we have is hit them while they're down. Useless. I already told you. These damage perks. Stop running them. I'll take that. I'll put this as mid. And if you run it by yourself, it's useless. If you run it as a twos, then it is useful. The reason why is because they didn't visually fix it yet. It's going to be in the next patch. But right now, what it does, it gives you 0 0.25 second refund on cooldowns. And then when you run it doubled, it's half a second now. So, yeah. If you run it by yourself horrible don't run it if you're running it with a partner then yeah i think it's still worth it because the half half a second is still pretty good in my opinion and yeah really recommend it um next we have is slippery on uh, one faint 10 percent increased dodge distance when dodging out of an attack hit cancel 20 percent if you're doing that i think this is a very useful and sleeper um perk what this does is it allows you to do a charge move and cancel out of it so if you don't want to know what that is i'll show you right now so when you do a charge and cancel out of it and what it does is it gives you that increased distance so you could um uh, pretty much bait i want to say yeah you can bait people with a charge even show that you're so far away but you know that increase 10 percent or you shoot even 20 percent allows you to get there even faster and then you know players are gonna be confused like whoa how, how did you make that like jump skip and it's because of this perk useful sleeper perk highly recommend it next we have is armor crush um your team fully charged breaks armor i feel like this is very mid when you run it by yourself but you run it double 75 percent it kind of gives you that lenient way of Charging but not fully charging, but sadly I'm still gonna put it mid because I think even 75%. I don't really feel a difference between 75% and um you know fully charged. I think it was at 50%. Then you could definitely see the difference, and I think it'll definitely be more worth it because you don't have to commit as long as you can because you know if you're doing an armor move, why even go to them if you know you're running armor break, you know? So just mid, mid perk overall. Next we have is two elasticity, um 20% reduction to ground and wall bounce velocity. Guys, I highly recommend this. This is a useful perk. Very good. Um, pretty much this, is, this stops you from getting killed um, at like 100, 110% when people down near you or dare you um, on stage. It helps out a lot. Double stack, I don't think it's needed, um, but definitely does, you know, help with the 5%. But again, running it by itself is a really useful perk. So running it doubled is, you know, makes it even more useful. But again, I don't recommend running it doubled. Next we have is stronger than ever. Receive five armor after respawning. Seven if double with your teammate. Useless. Guys, don't run this perk. This perk is horrible. It is terrible. All this does is it gives you armor on your respawn so you can't be punished right away or, you know, attacked right away. But you already get vulnerable by not attacking right away. And then on top of that, I guess it gives you that first hit. But if a team, if an enemy sees your armor, why even fight you? Just run away for the five seconds or use armor break moves to break it. Awful perk. Don't recommend it useless next we have a slippery customer receive 10 percent um longer dodge vulnerable window 50 percent uh, with an ally um i think this is a useful perk by itself already 
Um, so I guess it'll make it better. Um, you know, ran doubled. I don't recommend running double, but again, this is a useful perk. Having that longer window definitely helps out. Uh, not getting hit when you dodge into stuff or dodge out of stuff. Highly recommend it. Next, we have his Kryptonian skin, which is reduce four damage, incoming damage six if double with your teammate. Useless perk, guys. It's, it just doesn't do anything. Four percent, six percent. That's nothing. I don't even think that's one damage. I even I got. 15 damage hit it, it just is useful right don't don't run it back to back receive um six percent less damage um near ally 12 percent near an ally if the ran doubled useless break guys again these numbers are just not worth running it you're not really taking any less damage don't recommend it don't run it um next we have is boundless energy um receive 10 percent faster dodge run away speed uh, recharge doubled if 20 percent with your team um i say this is a mid perk um for people that burn their dodge meter more than others like superman and lebron i think it's recommended but uh, most characters it's not really needed you getting hit and you attacking people pretty much gets your bar up pretty fast so say it's a mid perk don't think it's that needed might even be a useless perk but you know for people that spam their um, meter a lot then definitely recommend this for you next we have is clear the air um destroy enemy projectile successfully neutral dodging um and then if you ran double then it's reflect projectile i think this is a mid perk um, the reason why it's a mid perk, at least at the high level, is because when you're getting spam with projectiles, it's cool to do that. But usually, when people spam projectiles, they usually you know follow up with it. So you neutral dodging just for that one projectile, you're gonna get hit by possibly another projectile, or you're gonna um you know get hit by them. Um, you know, another thing you can do is um reflect the projectile. But if you haven't used this perk, um, it takes a I want to say a, nearly a second before it reflects back. So again, even if it reflects back, the second projectile they might shoot will break that projectile and then they'll be following up with that or you know etc just hit you another projectile so very iffy perk don't really recommend it but this perk sturdy dodger that gives you armor for one second as you successfully dodging a uh, projectile is really good and even better when you run it um doubled very useful useful perk and a sleeper perk because i don't see a lot of people using this um i think this is way better than just deleting the projectile because not only that you you know miss a projectile and you get armor for it now if they're hitting you with another projectile it'll hit you and you won't get hit stun and if they follow up with it and hit you they won't get hit stun and now you have the priority of attacking them so i think this is a very slipped on perk and definitely should be used against you know projectile characters and stuff Next we have is the Absorbing Go. So this is when, say you do get hit by a lot of projectiles, then you get your cooldowns faster. Run doubled, 15%. By yourself, I think this is a useless and mid perk. But with a teammate, I think this is a use uh, a mid perk. 50% uh, is a lot actually. And again, your cooldowns, I think it was like, if that happens to you, you get hit by what, I think what, nearly six projectiles and you get it back on, on any, you know, cooldown you have. I think that's really good. Um... Definitely look into it, um, but yeah, I don't, it's it's like an iffy. It's a mid perk. Next we have is school me once. Um, receive a projectile block buff for two seconds after being knocked back by a projectile. Um, four seconds if it's ran by the ally. Now this one's kind of different. Um, I feel like if you run this as a double, it is useless, and the reason why is because you're giving up a perk slot that could be used for something else. And if you're using it by yourself, then then this is a useful perk. And the reason why is because I feel like if they are spamming projectiles, they're usually spamming another projectile, and that two seconds is enough for you to, you know, go in, get hit by whatever projectile they have, and punish them for it because they should still be in animation of whatever projectiles they're throwing. So I highly recommend that. Don't really recommend it being ran double because, like I said, even though it is good to have it last longer, you definitely be using any other perk that will benefit more than having, you know, a two second um, extra of having a projectile block buff. Next we have is utility guys. Now we have his Tasmanian tri um, trigonometry. Amazing perk. Ran by itself, useful. Ran by your you and your teammate, phenomenal. Definitely highly recommend this. What this does is it allows you to control your knockback influence way more, which is DI. And what this allows you to do is live longer. Pretty much if you get hit by a certain thing, it allows you to pull back even more and control your trajectory when you get hit and live longer. Highly recommend this. Definitely re highly recommend re running it doubled on light characters, especially on heavy characters, because they make them even last even longer, like Superman and Iron J and stuff. Just make sure you're DIing correctly, because if you don't DI, then you put yourself at a disadvantage and die because of it. Next we have is a single um in a single bound. This is 10% increased speed. Ran doubled is 15%. I say it's mid. 
Uh, the reason why, because I feel like a lot of these perks are sleepers because these do extend your combos and make them a little bit more true or your team combos a little bit more true because, you know, you're getting that increase of speed. Um, but I'm going to put it mid because increased speed jump, I don't know, it's iffy for me. Um, next we have is leg day inc a 10% increase jump height. So you do jump a little bit higher. Again, I'm going to put this mid. It's good. Just on certain characters, it works more than others. But yeah, mid perk. Next we have is gravity manipulation, which will be 10% increase. Fast fall speed, 20% um, with your ally. Again, mid perk. It's good. Same time, like I said, there's other perks that you could run, but this is really good for like you know characters that like to hit you in the air when you dodge and you're able to fast fall faster. Really good. So I guess when you run double, it's useful. But if you run by yourself, I would say it's mid. Move on. Next we have is hit me if you're able to increase five percent dodge speed, ten percent run doubled. Mid perk. I would love to say this is a useful perk, but that five percent um, dodge speed isn't too crazy, but it is crazy. It's very dependent. Percentages when it comes to stuff like this versus damage is way more useful, so that's why I had to put it in the mid perk. Uh, but it isn't too crazy where it's noticeable more, well, noticeable more than attacks, but not noticeable more in, than not using it. It's very complicated. I don't want to go too much into it, but I would highly say it's a mid perk. And if you feel like there's nothing else to run, then definitely run this um, for uh, you know a faster dodge speed. Next we have is last stand, 10% increased damage after reaching um, 100 damage. 10% um, earlier, so 90. Um, low tier perk, useless perk, don't recommend it. 10%, again, it's good, but it's just not that good. It's barely an increase of damage. I just don't recommend it. Next, we have is the pairs of motivation. Increase 50% um, damage for 10 seconds after your ally is rung out. Um, I'm going to give this a mid because this is definitely a sleeper perk. 50% is a decent amount, I would say. And I don't think there's a animation that kind of tells you or it tells your enemies that you're doing more damage. So having this for an extra 10 seconds of doing more damage, especially if your characters like Harley or Shaggy that, you know, build up damage a lot, can be a sleeper and be like, whoa, I'm at 80% when I should be at like 60 or 50 when he does this combo. Why am I even higher? So probably a sleeper perk. I'll put it mid. Next we have is footwork, which is 5% um, percent increased dodge distance. Now this perk I would say is useful because of the distance that you get. Again, it's like the other perk with the um, when you dodge canceling. Um, out of an attack this one is just dodging in general so you get that further distance so you say you know you're going through like bugs rocket now you're able to probably dodge it even better because of this distance definitely ran better when doubled so 10 percent amazing useful perk next we have is aerial acrobat um 10 percent increase air acceleration um i would have to say this is mid slash useful again and the reason why i say it's mid is because it's just not useful on a lot of characters but it is useful for certain characters like Superman, Arya, and even Bugs Bunny because of his bat of how brutal it is. But yeah, useful perk slash mid perk. Next we have is Trimple Jump. That S tier, the number one perk that you should always be running. What this does is it allows you to get an extra jump after hitting an enemy so you can continue comboing them and possibly killing them from the top. And then if you're run by your teammate, you literally have an extra jump always. You have an extra jump always. So when you're at disadvantage, you have an extra jump just to, you know, save yourself. S tier, useful perk, super useful perk. Highly recommend this. Next we have is Coffeezilla. 10% reduced ability cooldown duration. 50% if you ran by the teammate. I say this is a mid perk slash useful perk. I think this is just really good. Being able to get your stuff a whole 10% um, you know, faster, 50%, um, 15% faster with your teammate. Really useful on certain characters that just need it and other perks are just not that useful for it. I recommend it. Next we have is Speed Force Assist. Increased base speed by 4%. 8% um, increase by your um, with your teammate now by yourself I will put this perk as useless slash mid tier because this does again like I was talking about before with the whole speed increase this does extend your combos a little bit better because now you're able to get there faster and do better follow-ups but 4% is just not enough in my opinion but if ran with your teammate 8% and that's I think we're gonna see like the real differences, and that's when I would say this perk will be a useful perk. So running it doubled, useful. Running it solo, useless. Moving on, we have is I dodge, you dodge, we dodge. 10% ability cooldown refund after dodging an attack. 15% with a teammate. This perk is S tier. It is useful, guys. If you're running characters like Bugs Bunny, Velma, all these characters, Morty, all these characters that, that run cooldowns. Even Wonder Woman, just getting your cooldowns back faster um, that could change your game literally helps a lot. That's why it makes this perk a useful perk, a ST perk, and I highly recommend using this. 
and then finally retaliation ready um, grants great health for, for one health for three seconds um, after knocking back an opponent with projectiles and then two if you have it doubled useless perk this perk used to be very busted it has been toned down significantly I uh, really wish it goes up a little bit so it could be useful again but as of how it how if it's in its state right now I say it is a useless perk and should not be um, being ran and finally guys I'm going to be showing you the best combination of all these perks and your, sign your signature perk on your characters um, right now, yeah, I'm not gonna just blue ball you and say, alright, these are great perks, these are useless perks, now figure it out. No, I'm gonna show you out what are the best perks for all these characters right here, right now, and hopefully I do enjoy it. Alright guys, now we're gonna be doing the signature perks. Let's get straight into it. So we're gonna start off with Shaggy, Angry Man. If Shaggy has a sandwich crib, he can quickly charge, um, charge rage at a cost eating his sandwich. One last doing Shaggy gains rage automatically after passing 100 damage now guys i think this is very preference to be honest it really is depending on how what, what type of shaggy you are are you a shaggy that likes to get his charge a lot and get it a lot um then i recommend hangry man if you somehow get it a lot having that sandwich in your hand um definitely you know allows you to get it even faster and you know at the cost of your sandwich so you just can't do the big sandwich but you always get your you know your speed boost energy boost and you know go crazy now that zoink this allows you to have your um sandwich and still do your sandwich moves and on top of that, um, you know, once you get, you know, pretty weakened at 100, then you guarantee the extra charge to punish your opponent. So, again, um, it's it's preference. All right, next we have is Batman. First perk. Precision grapple. Grappling hook emits a powerful blast when um, Batman arrives on his destination. However, it deals less damage and knockback while grappling reels him in. Um, bounce ring. Hitting an enemy with a battering while it is returning to Batman will apply maximum stacks of weakening. Um, this one, I think the the bouncer ring is the best one because weakening is crazy and I think it's a five stack. That's amazing. This, I don't really recommend it. A little bounce. You know, it's cool that it does that, but it even says it does less damage and knockback. Not worth it, to be honest. Next we have is Taz. Now, Taz is very, um, I guess... His preference on how you play him so the first one is iron stomach when you get a projectile he gets an anvil which does a lot of damage and a lot of knockback and then next we have i gotta get in there which is when you use your dog pile move and your teammate gives a little win deals more damage more knockback longer duration and armor um, i highly recommend this in twos always run this in twos i don't think there's a reason you shouldn't be running this in twos um but if you are playing ones then the only thing you can use is iron stomach because you can't use this because you don't have a teammate so yeah uh, next we have is Garnet. Garnet we have is Electric Groove. Apply shock um, to enemies as Garnet to her ally grants the Garnet Rhythm. And then we have Marker. Garnet rockets will spawn um, a marker at her location. Destroy it and the marker will not spawn um, if it's on cooldown. Um, I recommend Electric Groove. This allows you to use two moves at once which is pretty good. So it could be preference again. But I highly recommend Electric Groove because again al applying shock to enemies as Garnet on her ally grants stats um stats on garnet's rhythm you know when she does a singing so more damage more hits done highly recommend this perk no reason why you shouldn't be running this next we have is jake and i'm pretty sure everyone knows what perk to run is sticky sticky enemies that touch jake while touching um will be briefly stunned and be easier to hit um because it you know brings them up to the top and hits them i'll uh, say lumber jack has the ability to bounce in the air after hitting the ground eh not that good don't recommend it stick with sticky <laughs> Next we have is Finn, and we have is on the house. Generate a free gem after connecting a fully charged ground attack. And what you don't know, if you don't know what that is, is this is um, running moves. So like stuff like this, 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 stuff like that. Um, and then we have going out of business. All of the items in Finn's shop are discounted by 200 gold for 10 seconds after Finn um, is ally has been rung out. The discount is permanent after Finn reaches 100 damage. This is cool and all, but having a free gem that you allows you to literally throw as a projectile, um, a hard projectile too, I'm pretty sure, and be able to, to teleport to it and do damage, too good to give up. So on the house is the perk that I highly recommend for signature perks. But if you don't use the gem on Finn like at all and you barely see yourself using it, then obviously I see yourself using going out the business to get the speed, get the um, armor stuff, and then BMO obviously. Um, next we have is Arya. Arya, I think the best perk for her is trophy. You know, when you knock an enemy, you get um you get a face which is you know her stun or stealing their move set i think that's amazing because again the stun is pretty brutal um and being able to take someone's neutral like bugs or superman's is brutal so i think trophy is the best bet um 
But you can use this dagger one, which is the ally dagger has a longer cooldown, but the ally is given an enrage buff if ally dash to this dagger and the ally she enrages herself. So you get the enrage, and that's pretty cool. But I rather knock someone out and get their face because I get a free um you know face steal and be able to stun them or use their neutrals against them, which is brutal in my opinion. Next we have is Harley. Um, smooth moves, Harley ground inside special also becomes dodge giving her a brief um, invulnerability at the beginning of her attack glove control um, she can aim her you know glove shot glove when it's down attack in the air and a confetti explosion um, ignites better than um what is it instead of igniting it's confetti which is just a larger explosion um, I think this is the number one perk to run her um, having that control on the down attack just gives you more control of like aiming it which you know gives you more directions of edge guarding with your with, um, against your opponent and it's just really good. This would be the second best perk in my opinion. You know, having that explosion damage, depending on what teammates you're having, having that boost up, you know, up attacks are pretty crucial. That could probably kill early because of it. And finally, the most useless perk in my opinion would be smooth move. Um, it's just not worth it. Even when you do the move correctly, you can still get punished pretty easily. Just not worth it in my opinion. Um, next we have is LeBron. LeBron's best perk in my opinion is key position. Uh, which is LeBron as ally receives a pass, they gain great health. So literally, if you bounce this um through people, or bounces through people, if you bounce this on an enemy or the wall and it goes through you, you yourself gets health and then your teammate gets health. And I think it's three um great health, which is pretty good. Um, next we have is the the hot hands, which I think is the second batch, which would be LeBron's complete no look pass. The ally will ignite the basketball, um, giving the um his dunks to ignite, you know, fire more damage overall and creates a firewall. Pretty good. Nothing too crazy because, you know, I don't know, I just don't feel like it's that crazy, like, getting free health all the time. But, um, this is definitely useful too. And then finally we have it for the three. Most useless perk, um, the reason why I think it's useless is because, uh, when you get hit with an enemy, uh, enemy from far range, the basketball explodes dealing more damage and knockback. That's cool and all, right? But, if you follow up, like, say if you go for the three and you follow up, like, f chasing the ball and it still hits the enemy, the explosion doesn't happen because you're not far away from it. So, hopefully that's a bug and hopefully that gets fixed, but that's the reason why I say this perk is not really that good. Because you have to let the, you know, projectile go and not follow up with it. So, pretty um, useless perk. Next we have is Wonder Woman. Best perk. Well, it really depends. I, I, I like all her perks. So, the first one is the shield one. Dodging creates a barrier that blocks enemy projectiles. The barrier goes on cooldown after the social block. Pretty amazing. Um, next we have is grapple. Um, woman, woman um, will grapple lightning out of the air and pull her oh, self. Oh my god, I can't even speak. What was that? Pretty much pulls herself out of trouble um, easier and goes to where she whiplashes and also still attick, um, hits enemies with it. Um, and finally we have the, the tipper, the sweet spot that makes it really more powerful when she gets that knockback. I think this would be obviously the number one perk to use. This would be the second one. And then finally, this would be the third one. But they're all very good, I say. So it really is preference on how you play one woman. But, you know, obviously, this would be the number one perk for one woman. Um, next we have is Superman. Superman's best perk would be um, Break the Ice. Break the Ice um, makes you deal more damage when you have, you know, the ice debuff on them. So, you know, he literally has a ice breath move. And he has a laser that also does, um, you know, um, that also applies ice. So highly recommend this. Second one I would say would be Sniper Punch, allowing to get that extra distance that uh, people might forget because you know you have this perk to go even further with this Sniper Punch is brutal, very slept on. Um, and then finally, you know, I feel like the most useless perk would be his landing when he does the his up special on the ground, which no one uses, and then leaves the firewall. I mean, the firewall is pretty cool, but doing a move overall is just not good in my opinion. So will be his least liked perk. So one, two, and three. Um. Next we have is Iron Giant. Iron Giant. Afterburns, after Iron Giant, Rocket Boost ignites the ground. They leave a firewall. Pretty good. Wrong side of the bed. Iron Knight spawns with some rage in his meter. Already filled. Pretty good. But then finally the best one. Static Discharge. Iron Giant's passive grants a, st a stack of thorns for each unique source of great health. So the great health he does when he plants it or throws it out and stuff that his teammates eat. So obviously this would be the number one perk to use. This would be the second one if you like to use his rocket and just leave fire all over over the stage a lot and finally the worst perk which probably just be you know gaining it you know having his rage meter a little bit filled yeah it's okay but i'd rather have this <laughs> next we have is steven steven best perk would be the bounce bubble enemies have their hit stun extended and velocity increased after getting hit um into steven's wall or platform shields amazing outstanding does a lot even with his up shield down shield side shield every shield amazing green dumb worst perk because it just makes steven watermelon bigger and does more damage and live longer, but if you've seen that watermelon, he's just not that good, in my opinion. But yeah, 
Uh, next we have is Rain Dog. I think the best perk that he has is the Crystal Pal. Rain Dog has the Crystal follow him um, as he descends. So literally when it descends slowly, it's following him. So wherever he goes, save you're going to hit in combos. If that crystal is above you, guess what? It saves you. And, you know, you can edge guard with it too. If you're going off stage and bringing the crystal, very highly reused perk. Recommend it. Um, Fire Fluff, Rain Dog, Fireball creates a firewall. Um, firewall upon hitting the ground. Pretty cool, you know, leaves a trail fire doing damage over time. But again... Over this perk, I don't think so. Definitely recommend this one. Next we have is Velma. Velma, best perk um, in twos because it's the only thing you can run in twos would be, well, not saying you can't run the other one, but this is just better in twos. When your ally goes for your evidence, they get three gray health for um, a few seconds. I think that's amazing. And then this one, pretty awful, but the only perk you can use in ones is you spawn with an extra evidence. So in ones, yeah, use this, but in twos, you should always use this one. No one, no matter what. There's no reason why you should spawn whatever extra evidence versus giving your teammate great health, you know? Next, we have, oops, we have, is Bugs Bunny. Best perk, it will be coming through Doc, which is, you know, when he goes out to the tunnel, gets the shockwave. Um, just being able to go through your tunnel, getting that blast, and pretty much getting a confirmed, you know, free hit or protection when coming out of it is amazing. Lingering Love was pretty cool, but they nerfed it um, tremendously, so I really just wouldn't recommend it. It's not that good anymore. So the perk you should be running for your signature is coming through Doc. Next we have is Tom and Jerry. And he has two perks. I think they're both very useful. But this one is just so more mandatory than the other one. Which would be Dynamite Split. When um he reflects his Dynamite, it goes into three stack. Covering, you know, more of the stage. While this Fry Fisher is cool that it's weaker. But it pulls him to safety easier. So like, for example, if you throw it out and you go to the stage, it pulls you in. So it's kind of like a, a, a safety, you know, thing. Like you're guaranteed to never die. But then this makes this move very useless, which protects and disrupts a lot of moves, like, say, in duels and stuff. Highly recommend this one over that one. But if you don't see yourself ever using Dynamite a lot, then I guess recommend this one. You know, you're always guaranteed never to die from getting hit off stage if, you know, you're still alive to use your specials and stuff. So, yeah. And then finally, guys, last one is Morty. And these two perks, in my opinion, are kind of at tie, obviously, depending on what game mode you play. If you're playing ones, I highly recommend the grenade one, which this does is the longer the grenade. And I'm saying this now because I actually got confused, too. The longer the grenade is on the ground is the longer the knockback or the maximum exploding explosion radius starts, not how long you cook it. So it's not um, how long you charge it in your hand and throw it. It's how long you let the grenade stay on the ground. That gives it its maximum explosives. Yes, I know. I, I, I know I'm not the only one that got that confused. So there you go. For the people that was confused on why certain times it was bigger than other times, that's the reason. Next we have is I'm more than just a hammer. Morty spawns hammer, um, hammer Morty and there's a spin cycle hitting multiple times. Amazing perk in, in twos in my opinion, especially if you have a team that likes to throw your enemies towards them. Amazing. Um, and finally, we have the extra fleece juice. Morty Plumbus leaves the extra you can clean. And what this does is it pretty much cleans all the hazards on the map. So like fire, Bugs' tunnel, um, I think Jerry after the patch, um, a whole bunch of stuff. Any any hazard that you know that's on the ground, pretty much that's what it, it does. I, in my opinion, I think it should just be in his moveset. Um, versus these two, I just don't think it's worth you know, running this over the other two. So I highly recommend this one in ones. Highly recommend this one in twos. And if you're just trying to have fun and troll the enemies, run this one. But I don't rec really recommend this perk at all. But definitely between these two, highly recommend them. Um, but yeah, that is it for the signature perks. And while I was saying the signature per perks, you should have seen the best combinations with those signature perks. Or, you know, just best combination um, on characters overall. Leave a like if you like the video. About anything, you know, I love y'all comments, you know. Comment what perk combinations y'all think I forgot in this video. And this is your first time everybody wanting my videos and you do enjoy multiverses content. And this is the channel for you guys. Hit the subscribe button. And I'm out guys. Peace. Yeah, she got a man, she don't really give a fuck about left him back home in a home never stay. Move to LA cause she wanna be famous. Got another five on the side, she a waitress, but it's getting tough. Hard to find better.